All right, we are your local election headquarters where we're following the very latest with polls, with the elections on this Tuesday, and joining us this morning to help us navigate what we're seeing on this very contentious midterm, which you don't often see in a midterm, political analyst Michael Yaki. Michael, it's great to have you back in studio it after so, so long. It is so cool to be back in here in the yeah. morning show. It's great. So let's get right into it. So today is the day that everybody comes to the polls. This is a day where we could find out if things change for us in Washington, the balance of power. Uh, you've been following the very latest with all this, the House, the Senate, Republicans right. want both. What's the most likely scenario today? Well, I think that the most likely scenario is we won't know today. Ah. Uh, and so to, to explain, because of the rise in, in mail-in voting, even in the states that have put a lot of more restraints on it, like Pennsylvania, Arizona, yeah. elsewhere. It's going to take some time to count, especially like Georgia will probably take two or three weeks to count. And so when you look at the balance of power in the Senate and you look at the three key races mm -hmm. that I'm looking at, which are Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Georgia, all of those could come later this week and Georgia may be a couple weeks from them. So if it comes down to one seat and it's Georgia, mm -hmm. we won't know till December. The House will be a little trickier. It'll be, there'll be some early sign on the East Coast. If you look at some districts in New York and Pennsylvania yeah. where there are some, some close seats, you'll, be, you'll be, get a sense of whether or not there's a blue or a red wave. Right now, the Republicans are predicting a red wave. That's where all the polls seem to go, be going. But then there's some pushback because a lot of those polls that came out were all sponsored by Republican mm -hmm. affiliates. So... Whether they were biased or not, we won't, we'll have to see. What everyone does know, it's going to be close. It's going to be a couple hundred votes per precinct, a thousand votes, perhaps in an entire state that could turn the balance of power for the entire election. Well, with the margin of victory that narrow, that, of course, then makes it rife to recount. Makes right. it, it rife for <laughs> accusations oh, of yeah, exactly. miscounting and all that stuff, which is something that, uh, you know, People on the on the on the far right have already laid the groundwork for that they are prepared to challenge anything that's close, anything whatsoever. I've always wondered if you asked one of those candidates if he, if you won by a hundred, mm -hmm. would you claim legitimacy? Right. If you lost by a hundred, would you deny the election? Yeah. And they're all refusing really to answer that question because yeah. all they care about is whether or not they win. If they don't win, then they didn't lose. Right. You know, and on that note, does it surprise you that the vast majority of the GOP candidates that are currently running uh, are election deniers? No, I, I mean... Um, and, and that they are leading in a lot of these races. You know, this, this, ra this race is boiling down to two messages right now. For the Republicans, it's about the economy. Mm -hmm. And for everyone else... It's about democracy. Right. And the question is going to be, which of those is going to impel people to cast their votes mm -hmm. at the local level, at the state level, at the federal level, between now and the end of the day today? And how all that gets counted is going to make a big difference in the future, quite frankly, of this country. And, and it's something that I'm really worried about as someone who's been in this for a long time right. and who studied this for a long time. I've never seen it this bad and I've never seen, a, seen it to a point where our democracy is on the cusp of potential catastrophic change as it is right now. So what does this mean then for people that may be sitting at home wondering, I don't know, is it really going out and voting in the midterms worth it? What does this election set the stage for come two years now in the presidential it's, election year? It's a great question, James, because I was going to talk about that. We live in California. It's a little bit of a bubble. Yeah. We Democrats outnumber Republicans by 5 million registration. It's going to be everyone's kind of, in, except in those areas where mm -hmm. some are focused one or another. The, the race is kind of going to, you're going to see where it is. You're going to see on, on the statewide propositions. Right. You're going to see Gavin Newsom probably winning by a lot today. But what people can do is people came here from somewhere else. A lot of us did. Mm -hmm. Call your friends. Call your family. Let them know how important it is mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. and to this country to get out and vote. And that's really the message that between now and, let's see, 5 o'clock, right. 5 o'clock our time, which is when the polls close on a lot on the coast, East Coast, yeah. to get out there, get on the phone, talk to people, and, and try and make a difference. Because, yes, we have our differences. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have we have an economy that needs to, needs to be revived. Mm -hmm. But... It, Underneath all of that is the world that you and I enjoy, mm -hmm. that we live in, in which there's a First Amendment, we can speak freely, no one's looking over our shoulder, no one's telling us what we can and cannot say. And there is so much of that 
right now at stake for our country. Wow. Well, well put. <laughs> and we've got lots to talk more about with you, too. I want to ask you, and you, it, Mike will be with us again tomorrow as we're analyzing, yeah, analyzing the results what, what that have did come happen. in. But, yeah, the Trump effect, because he's hinted that he potentially could announce a run in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, what, he wants to run. He, well, he wants to announce fast because he's hoping that'll meet, that means he won't get indicted. With the investigations, <laughs> yeah. So we'll talk about all of that coming up here uh, tomorrow with Michael. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, James. And we will be right back after this.